Here I am today with Welsh International and Scarlet's prop, Rob Evans. And today, we're going to talk about Rob's tips for success and achievement. We've just been having a little chat, mate. I mean, we've yeah. been, both been watching the SAS SBS programme, haven't we? And yeah. I've, I'm, I'm all here in black, just to give a shout out to the lads. Yeah. How are you finding that? Yeah, it's pretty awesome. It's brilliant, isn't yeah, it? Yeah, pretty awesome. I reckon I, I could give it a good crack, you know? Well, you, you, <laughs> <laughs> no, you did a long run not long ago, didn't you? Yeah, that was tough. Uh, I don't know about, uh, about this SAS stuff, because uh, that log run was tough. Yeah, because so. you were up in St Athens and yeah. some commandos or SAS type people. Yeah. And uh, Yeah, they, um, we were there the night before just... You were drinking, weren't you, mate? No, just tell me. No, we, <laughs> you were drinking we, the night before. No, we weren't, we weren't drinking. We were just <laughs> flipping each other's beds over and stuff. And then probably got to sleep by one o'clock. And uh, then about quarter to five, we had a, some mental bloke ripping us out of our beds. And we had to do a log run then. It was mental, were not they? Eight, eight miles. Yeah, it was tough. It was tough. So Brilliant. good, though. So, Good. Yeah. It's character building stuff, yeah. as we call in the forces, mate. Yeah. And on so. that note, we're g I'm going to be interviewing uh, Ollie and Foxy and Colin off the SAS Who Dares Wins programme on Channel 4 very soon, so I'm quite excited about that. And uh, But what many people don't know is... A lot of them are in the SBS, and it's 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 all it's quieter than the the S the SAS. Everyone knows. Yeah. Not many people know about the SBS because they're really shh. Yeah. There could be one of them in the room now, mate. Yeah. Don't say anything out of place, mate. They make them abseiling uh, through your window. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I keep I I keep it on there on the low, like. <laughs> keep on the low, mate. Uh, so you left school. Yeah. And um, what you leave school at? Um, 17. I left school. I went to college then. Um, I at sixteen, uh, I was in the Scarlets under the under sixteens, and um, then I went to play for Wales under eighteen, so I was seventeen, and I got dra I got drafted into the academy, yeah, the Scarlets academy, and uh, so rugby was pretty much on my mind all the time, but mum and dad wanted me to uh, do a bit more studying, like so. I went to Pembrokeshire College and I did uh, engineering, HND, and um, well, I managed to pass it, but... Um, Good effort, yeah, mate, give me a high five. <laughs> <laughs> I wouldn't have passed it. No, no, I was happy with the pass, so... Um, yeah, and then just... Just um, carried on with my uh, Scarlet's then, um, through the Scarlet's Academy, um, got into Wales in the 20s, um, played in the World Cup, out in South Africa, um, beat New Zealand, uh, came third in the My world. My God, that's, yeah. that, that, you don't get yeah. much better math, nah. do you? No, it was pretty, they are pretty good. They team. Memorable day. Memorable day. Um, then came back in and got off of my first pro contract with Scarlet, huh? at 20, so three years ago now. And that, so. you're basically living your dream life, aren't you? Yeah, yeah, I don't, I don't like... Um, when I was like younger, that was all I wanted to do. But now I see it. It's a bit like you don't think it. You are, but sometimes you need to take a step back and, and think, think how yeah. lucky you are yeah. and stuff like that. Yeah. Because that's <coughs> one of the things that I say to people: don't do a job that you hate because you're wasting your life. People, don't do it. <laughs> it is though, isn't it, mate? Yeah. You, you're gonna find something that you love to do. That's what I reckon, anyway. Yeah, I agree. Who was? Uh, what was it like when you? got your first cap for Wales, how did you find out about it? Um, well, I was in, I was, I've been in uh, the Welsh squads for a few years now, just like drafted in and out and it's been a bit all over the, over the shop really, but then I got announced in the officially proper in the Six Nations squad back this year in the Six Nations, um, which is around February time. Um, so yeah, I was, uh, this obviously Geffen Jenkins and Paul James have been there for a number of years now. They're both thirty well, I think they're thirty five and thirty four. So they're a bit older than me. So they obviously with experience as a prop, like they were getting yeah. the nod ahead, which was fair enough, like um which I expected really. And then um but Paul James got injured out in France 
uh, broke his thumb. So I had a text of him in the week saying, all the best, mate. I was like, I was just in, uh, I think I was just at home or something. And um, I was like, what do you mean? He was, so he put his thumb up to me and it was a cast. So I was like, my heart started going then. Thinking oh my God, could, yeah. Could be in the mix for the weekend. And obviously Wales are doing pretty well. Like, And they had Ireland on the weekend then, which were Ireland and lost the game. So yeah, I had a phone call pretty pretty soon after that, and um, well, basically uh, saying, I, obviously you train with the squad, but then if you're not needed, you go back to play for your club like Scarlets. Yeah. So I had a phone call then to say come up to uh, training, um, like uh, obviously not to play the game on the weekend for the Scarlets to go up to Wales to so basically save me for the weekend. So my heart started going a little bit. So I went up to training, um, named, named the team then pretty much the day after, um, uh, and I was on the bench then. Um, so it was a pretty big moment for me getting named on the bench, because I've been waiting for that for, since I was 11, really. Yeah. Well, all my life, really, but it's pretty cool. And then, um, yeah, so the training week went pretty well. I was a little bit nervous, so just trying to th- trying to think... Um, think about everything I needed to do. You know, it it doesn't like and it, like it if like uh, when it comes, everyone thinks ah, oh, it's like a big special occasion. It it is, but you're just trying to make sure you don't do anything wrong. Like you're trying to make sure that you get everything right as well. So um, yeah, the training week came, um, and then on the Friday, which is a team run, which it's not actually a run, but the boys like do a little run through um, like ten minutes before. Uh, it's 10 minutes, like just a team run the day before a game, so where they run through their moves and stuff. Yeah. Gaffin Jenkins uh, pulled up and he had a bit of a sore calf. And he looked at me, he was, he was like, get ready. I was like, well, what do you mean? I, I'm, I'm ready to be on the bench, not, not start the game. Yeah. So luckily, <laughs> luckily, luckily he pulled through and he started the game, but he, was, he went down after like five minutes and he was struggling uh, the whole half. So... They told me to warm up, like I could be going on any minute. Um, but I managed to stand out the half, and then because um, uh, all week, like I was thinking, will I actually get my cap? Like, because I've been waiting for it so long, like I didn't know if I'd actually get my cap. Like, it's just a little thought in my head. But came to half time, and I went to the toilet quickly. I came back out, and uh, Gat and Warren Gatlin just uh, said, "Rob, you're on." I was like, "Oh, I just." so quick like yeah. and so he said like, get ready so I took my top off and before I knew it I was did, out, did out on the like pitch did you do bodybuilding pose when you took your top off were you like that yeah I did you that in the like, mirror on the way of, out in front of Warren Gatlin yeah I picked him up <laughs> <laughs> nah nah I didn't I didn't, didn't do that spun I was, him around a few yeah, times yeah so, oh, that's um, fantastic yeah that's how it went then and then just run out onto the pitch and um, it was so loud that game like, because uh, I don't know if you remember it, but we had, um, like, we held them out on the line for, like, 10, 10 minutes, the fence. And just the crowd was so loud. Um, but, yeah, it was awesome. It was awesome, to be fair. For the people that are listening to this and yeah. watching this, um, if they go on YouTube, they can, will they just type in Wales and... Yeah, this should, this should be on. It's on there somewhere. Um, Wales, this island, Six Nations. Yeah. 2015. 2015. Yeah. Can have a, another so, look at it. Yeah. Then. Yeah. But that so. that noise was quite a bit more deafening than. Yeah, and the roof the roof was shut as well, so oh. it was it was just bouncing, just especially when we won like a penalty and stuff. It was just so loud. So yeah, it was good. It's good. Fantastic. Um, did you have any like inspirational people? Did you think when you were growing up, you thought, oh, I want to be like that person? Yeah. Um, a lot of people ask me this. I, I like when I was growing up, I used to love watching the Scarlet like, and yeah. there was a few players there like, um, well, um, Martin Madden, he was like a big fat, um, black prop and he was yeah. class, like he was quick and yeah. Proper fat, like, but I just used to love watching him. So you don't mince your words, <laughs> do you, mate? Nah. It's like, well, I'm a personal trainer. I can't. I don't think I can even yeah, say the word fat. Yeah, I'll yeah. get like, yeah. <laughs> He's well, a fat. <laughs> yeah, he, he was fat, like. 
Uh, if you've seen him, you probably agree. So, um, now nah, him. And then, yeah, just growing up, obviously, I used to watch like people like Martin Williams, Geff and Jenkins, who I yeah. obviously came off the bench for. Um, There's just a few few players, really, just growing up, watching them. And I'm with him good. in a couple of weeks' time, Geffen. Are you? Yeah, there's a, there's a Cordwell yeah. Trust charity lunch with him, Jamie Bosch, and you know, you know Sean Lloyd, the weather girl? Yeah. She's pretty fit, isn't she? Wow. She's been going forever. <laughs> She's been for a long time, mate. She's yeah. been going since I was your age. Yeah, you know what yeah, I mean? yeah. But she's a lovely person. Yeah. How important is it to associate with the right people? Um, how important is um, Well, when I was growing up through school, like, a lot of my mates, um, like, we, we all played rugby, so... Like rugby was a big thing to all of us boys. Um, well, it still is now, but obviously back in like every lunchtime we used to play touch rugby in STP on the yard and stuff. And uh, there's occasional British bulldog with a rugby ball involved. <laughs> a few injuries there, um, yeah. but no, nah, it was um, it was good to obviously play in rugby with a lot of my mates. And um, yeah, well, <coughs> um, through right through secondary school. Always rugby was a big thing, and on a Sunday, used to be a Sunday, um, used to play with the boys then for half to west. Yeah. And then it came when I was like 16, used to play in the youth then. And yeah, just, just I suppose um, if, if your mates aren't into it as much as they as mine were, maybe it would maybe be different, but... On the other hand, I don't know if like I was pretty focused as well. Like that was all I wanted to do. So if it means that much to you, I think maybe it doesn't doesn't really matter. Like as long as you're one track minded and you you've got a focus and doesn't really matter who is around you then. But and you a lot of your mates supporting you. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. Ah, oh, my mates are awesome, really. Um, one of my best mates, Adam Clark, and he plays rugby for Narbeth. My brother plays for rugby for Narbeth, and. Um, yeah, they're, they're pretty awesome. Like, they don't really don't really speak about it too much. They're happy just giving me banter about it, but I know, yeah. like, if I needed them, they'd be there, so... Did you have any people that were, um, um, friends that just quite got a little bit like, oh, I don't like how... This guy's coming, becoming too successful. Or were they all supporting you, or were there one or two that were like, oh, well, I don't really... Um, you know, were there any critics, mate? Did you have any people uh, bad mouth in you? There's always critics. <laughs> there's always critics. Um, yeah, there's always critics. Um, actually, don't say after, any names. Af- like don't, after don't any... after my game in Italy, uh, the scrum didn't go too well. Like, but yeah. um, well, there was a few. Uh, I don't know whether the, the ref was making the right calls, but that's another argument. But um, uh, obviously, like. No disrespect to anyone, but not everyone understands rugby as much as what yeah. rugby is. So yeah. there's a few uh, keyboard warriors on Twitter and check Twitter after the game. And it was like, there was one comment saying Rob Evans, more like Nob Evans. Oh my God. <laughs> so I was pretty happy with that, to be fair. So. Good God. Um, but that's a bit harsh, isn't it? Just, it is. I just laughed it off. Like, it was, it was fine. So I looked at him and the guy was a little dweeb. So. <laughs> The hell right. with him. Yeah, it's fine. But, but Go- we um, talked about yeah, we talked about Goffy. Yeah, he said the same thing. He said keyboard warriors. He said yeah. He said Mark, I just don't read the news. Yeah, <laughs> the oh, papers. I know. Like I've had a few mates like Reese Priestland, and um, well now like Alex Cuthbert, like yeah. a good mates of mine, and like even if they have a bad game, like people just still slate them, like they don't have a clue really. So yeah, you just try and rise above it really, and don't don't bother reading it. So no, I mean half the people haven't got a clue, you know. And they don't, they don't actually realise until they get on the pitch. The yeah. standard. I played against. Yeah. I'm talking about um, Gareth Thomas. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I went up for a charity um, rugby match. Yeah, yeah. And there was me, and there was some people that had achieved, uh, done well in their certain sports yeah. versus people that had played for Wales. All right. And I thought I was quite good, mate. I was like in, in my school team, we were the best in the county. Yeah. But do you know what happened to me in that rugby net game? No. I got ragged round. <laughs> I didn't know what the hell hit me. Yeah. And they were passing the ball so fast, yeah. it was like, oh, gee, oh my God. It's yeah, like, a, it's, and, and when you're up with people like that, it's like, yeah. it's, it's, it, 
it's easy to say when you're looking on the telly saying, oh, what the heck? But yeah. when you're there, it's so much more difficult, isn't yeah. it? Yeah, and no, it is tough. Like, um, I think what people forget, like, I know it's rugby and it means a lot to uh, everyone in Wales as well, but it means a lot to the player as well. And, yeah. like, um, they're just doing their job and everyone has a bad day and work some, some days, don't they? So... And you want to do your best, <coughs> don't you? You genuinely... Oh, yeah. I think that's why people forget. Like, they're not trying to do bad, are they? Do you no. Mean? So, nope. it's just a tough game, and sometimes things don't go your way, and, yeah, that's the way it is. So, yeah, it's all, it's all good, though. How do you deal with that, with, you know, things don't go your way? Let's, we talked about injury earlier. Yeah. Um, how do you deal with that mentally, getting over the injuries? When I was, when I was younger, um, obviously I was new to it, um, it's it is tough. Like if, if it's tough, uh, I did I bust my shoulder, um, dislocated my shoulder against Ireland in the twenties, uh, and I was it was just it was a big time for me. Like um, I just got my first start in the under twenties over the other prop, and um, I was looking forward to going to the World Cup uh, in Italy at the time, and oh, I was gutted. I, I just. I remember like coming home that night, um, and they them saying, "Oh, you got to have an operation. You're out for like three months." Yeah. Oh, that was the worst I've ever felt. Really, like um, felt terrible. Like I just, I'm still, I am like I, I do deal with it pretty bad now, but it was bad worse. I am better than what I was. So it is tough. You just, I suppose, you just got. You've literally just got to say it's part of the game. You've got to expect it. Um, and that's that's it, Jimmy. Like there's yeah. there's boys like close mates of mine again, like Scott Williams now in the World Cup, um, Lee Halfpenny, Reese Webb. Like um, they they've done all that work before the World Cup, and then they get injured, and like all the work that they've done has just gone to waste. And it is it is tough to take. Like I don't think it'll ever get easy. It's not easy to take for anyone really. But you've just got to uh, just got to take it for what it is, and then just quickly change your mindset and get focused on getting back and ready for the next thing you know so that's, that's it yeah how often do you train um in terms of physical training as in weights and uh, weights or do you do any running or yeah we um uh, obviously in the pre valley classes anything like that do that do that on a monday <laughs> <laughs> um nah, um uh on a obviously in the pre-season it's a lot more um, running based and uh, a lot more weights. Um, probably do weights twice a day in the preseason and running then about four hard running sessions a week. But then obviously when you're coming into season, you can't do that because you're playing big physical games on the weekend and they're trying to get you fresh as well. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. So on a back to a normal rugby week, um, a competitive week, it's normally on a Monday. Um, you probably do weights in the morning um, for an hour, um, and then you'll go into a yoga session. Um, really, yeah, yoga? Yeah, a lot of um, a lot of like stuff like that just to keep you oh. stretching and stuff like that. Um, and you probably have a bit of a food, um, a few meetings, and then a rugby session in the afternoon on a Monday. You know the yoga. Can yeah. You, can you like? Are you at the stage where you can like levitate off the ground? Mate, the I'm shocking at yoga. <laughs> <laughs> I can't do anything, but there are some boys doing backflips and all of that. Really? So, nah. Is, oh no. Nah. <laughs> There's no no boys doing <laughs> backflips in there. So. Uh, None of the second rows doing backflips. Nah. Flips. Well, we're in. I'm in with the front row group, so. Yeah, the only things that are happening in there that are funny are farting, really. So. Well, you can't beat a bit of fart. Yeah. Now, my yeah. five-year-old son, he loves a bit of fart. Is it? It's probably the funniest thing yeah. in the world. Yeah, well, a few boys in, in, uh, in training are like that as well. So. And, and, and uh, do, you, do you all like... Uh, you, so you're on the front row. Yeah. So do you, do you eat eggs and stuff like that? Because that's quite harsh, yeah. isn't it? And, and you let one rip and then there's like... Uh, oh, it's, it's quite nasty fair, for the people behind you. To be fair, I'm not that bad. Like, I'm, I, I tend to keep it in a little bit. But, um, yeah, there's a few... Um, there are a few uh, boys who like to let them rip in there. <laughs> Good God. So, don't mention any uh, names. No, don't mention any names, nah. mate. You're a nutrition. Yeah. What do you eat in the day? Um, nutrition. Um, yeah, it's pretty, pretty, pretty key, really. Um, try to uh, try to keep um, 
my diet pretty the same throughout the weeks that I'm playing, you know. So um, the start of the week, I won't have as much much carbs, but then towards the end of the week, I'll have a bit more carbs ready for the game, you know. Um, normally on a Friday and a Saturday morning. Yeah. My old man makes me pasta every before every game, pasta chicken. Uh, peas, onions. It's good yeah, stuff. Happy that. Um, like no, and then uh, just the general protein and stuff. And through the week, like normal, just normal meals, basically, like um, like balanced meals, like chicken and veg and stuff like that. And yeah, you know, odd sticky toffee pudding. Nah, oh, <laughs> nah, it's not, nah. Come on now, you might have the odd hot chocolate fudge cake. <laughs> well, when you go over to your auntie and she's making cakes ah. all the time, you can't really say no, can you? You can't so, do it, mate. Nah. If you go over, but if you're over there every day, it becomes a problem. Yeah, that's why you don't go over there every day. <laughs> 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 Who's the best player in the world at the moment, do you reckon? Um, best player in the world. It's a tough question, see, because there's. Top. Can you can you give a top three? Apart from yourself, diff- of course. Yeah, well, I'm up there, and I so. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, it's um, it's different positions, isn't it? Like, um, it's, like you can't say there's one best player because everyone's good at different things. But yeah. obviously, like um, at the moment, like obviously Richie McCaw is just going out at the moment, and he's been there for like years, so he's he's up there. And then, but David Pocock on the weekend, and Dan Carter, all these names really, they're pretty pretty awesome at the moment so yeah yeah probably them three are up there and uh, we were talking about Goffey earlier on now yeah and um, you were saying that you played against him what was your experience playing against Goffey like <laughs> um, well it, like we talked about growing up watching these players like I always we used to watch him for Wales and he used to always put in some big hits but then he, he played he signed for the Dragons a few years ago and it was Scarlet's Dragons I think it was on a Sunday afternoon and um, I was young and I was about 21, probably giving it the big one, a bit more than what Give I should it have. Give the chops, yeah. <laughs> I'm the man. Yeah, so I run, I run a line, like I, I just run a decoy line and next thing I just bang, something whacked me in the side of the jaw. I looked around and it was just a massive man looking at me and like basically saying, Go on, give it a try. Yeah, have a uh, go. I looked at him and just ran off as quick as, quick, <laughs> as, quick I, as I could. Well, so, nah, I, I got a lot of respect for him. So, one of, one, yeah, when I was growing up, he was just one of, one of the players I used to look look at. And, and you, the so. thing is, you got to look up to him because he's like six foot five. He's yeah. actually, I was over at his house the other day, he's actually a head bigger than me, mate. Yeah, he's a man mountain. But he's so. in great shape as well, isn't he? Yeah, it? yeah, he is. He is. He is. And he's just brought his book out. Yeah. Goffy. Yeah. A tough lot of crap. And he is actually, he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, isn't he? Yeah. Lovely off the field. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely off the field. So where can people see you train? Um, uh, so where can they see you play the game? Because you're playing for Scarlets at the moment. Yeah. Um, and you, where are you in the league at the moment, mate? We are, are, we are top of the league at the you're moment. You're top of the... So, come on, yeah. bring it in. <laughs> top of the league. It's, yeah. No, we're doing well at the moment. There's a good bunch of boys there. Um, yeah. Wayne Pivak, the coach, brought a good environment. And obviously, Stephen Jones, then, Welsh legend, has come down. And he's, he's yeah. doing our attacking coach. He's our attack coach, so now things are going well at the moment, so don't want to get ahead of ourselves, but just keep it there and keep working hard and see 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 we see where we are at the end of the season. So Fantastic, mate. Yeah, um yeah, uh, playing for Scarlet's got a game this Friday night now, um Leinster away, which will be a tough game. Um obviously Leinster, renowned team in the league and big they got some big names back this week, like Sean O'Brien, Keen Healy. So it'll be a big test for us. We haven't lost the game yet, so it'll be a big test out in Dublin. I've never won out there. I don't think the, the Scar- well, the Scarlets haven't won ever out there when I've been oh, involved. Right. So it'll be a tough game, but now nah, boys are quietly confident and we'll see how we get on. So and what are the um, do you know what other games you got coming up in the yeah place? we got the the Heineken Cup now, um, which is obviously a big competition Europe. Um, so. Um, we got Northampton Saints away, um, and then we got Ras and Metro, which is a team from Paris, um, coming over then uh, in Park Scarlets. I think that's on a Sunday. Um, so yeah, two big gate, well, big couple of weeks coming up. 
then obviously leading into Christmas and the Scarlet Ospreys derby on Boxing Day in 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 Clatley. So yeah, yeah, no, it's going well. It's going well. So fantastic. Yeah. Well, thank you very much for that, Rob. No it problem. It's been mate. an honour and a pleasure. Same. All the best, mate. Take care, mate. Cheers. Top man.